welcome back let's look at conditional statements so far we have done linear programming now we will look at branching as well let's look at that in more detail so let's look at this particular program right if students grade is greater than or equal to 60 print passed else it has to print as fail right so let's look at this condition if the grade of the student there is a condition which is being checked is greater than or equal to 60 then it prints passed right otherwise it comes back here to the main flow so in c statement if grade is greater than or equal to 60 then printf passed right so decisions are required in programs it is very important to build logic in a computer program so in c if is the statement which is being used for taking decisions so let's look at a simple program of comparing two numbers to find out which number is bigger so let's look at online gdb for that um, int a comma b two integers are being declared enter the two numbers so this will prompt the user to enter the two numbers we are getting the two numbers and storing it in a and b so this is how you check the condition if a greater than b the space actually c doesn't really worry about the space so if you want you can give a space here or you can remove usually it is better to give the space because it improves the readability so if a is greater than b then this open flower brackets which will say that all the statements within that has to be executed so printf percentage d is better than percentage d that is value of a will be substituted here value of b will be substituted here so if the value of a let's assume is 4 and value of b is 3 4 is greater than 3 will be checked yes that condition is true so 4 is greater than b uh, i mean 4 is greater than 3 so it's a relational operator so it returns 1 for 4 is greater than uh, 3 so this gets executed 4 is bigger than 3 that gets printed on the screen so this percentage will be substituted by the value of a this percentage d is substituted by the value of b right so 4 and 3 now let's assume that we are giving the input as 3 and 4 a is 3 and b is 4 so if a greater than b will be checked no um, it is not true 3 is not greater than false uh, 4 so 3 is not greater than 4 so this condition in relational operation evaluates to 0 so it will skip these statements it will come to the else block so again it is checking else if b is greater than a right so yes b is greater than a which is true right so 4 is greater than 3 so it prints percentage d is greater than percentage d b comma a the value of b which is 4 is printed 4 is greater than 3 now if these two are false i mean it, this is false this is false then it means that both the values are equal so it here it prints both are equal let's run it so enter the two numbers first i'll make a as 4 and b as 3 it will print 4 is greater than 3 I'll run it again, the same program with two numbers 3 and 10. Now B is greater than A, so it will print 10 is greater than 3. So it's actually executing this statement. Now let's run it again. Let's give two equal numbers 10 and 10. Both are equal. So this is the logic. Now let's look at the syntax again. If A greater than B, flower brackets, within that you can have any number of statements here so this flower bracket ends here so the if is valid till here else if b is greater than a flower bracket flower bracket it checks this condition so if this condition is true it does not execute any of these so it executes this and then it comes here but if this condition is false then it checks this condition it executes this condition if this is true else it comes here but if this condition is true then it executes this does not execute this it comes here but if these two are false then it comes here and executes this this is the way decision making or the if statement works in c so let's look at this using python tutor the advantage of python tutor is it shows you 
what happens and it shows you step by step execution. So let's look at the same C program in Python tutor. I am in visualization mode, right? So we have two variables, both are initialized to three and four. So you see that in memory, three and four, two variables are initialized, both are of integer type. So it's checking if A is greater than B, A is three, B is four. So now, nope, this is false because it did not execute the statement. So three is not greater than four. Now it is checking else if B is greater than A. B is 4, A is 3, so B is greater than A is true, so it will come here to the statement. So it's going to execute the statement and this is where, this is the monitor where it's going to print the output. Yes, B is greater than A and if you look at it, it skipped the else part, it came out directly. So that's the execution. Now let's look at another program. So I've done a couple of additions to this, I've added these two lines. Again, the code would run the same way, A is 3, B is 4, so A greater than B, no, so it skips this entire block and then comes here. So it jumps to the else, all these lines are kind of skipped out. So this is called the decision making. So now else, yes, it prints this line, right, so and then it skips this block. So this is how if works in detail. So one thing to remember in Python tutor is it does not support scanf or get care. So you cannot get dynamic inputs with this, but you can understand the flow of it in a much better way. We will use this extensively in coming chapters. So let's check the second example. It provides more insights. Hash include stdio.h int main here integer grade. Now enter the grade. There is value requested from the user. So scanf percentage t ampersand grade. So a value is entered. So here there is a check. If grade is greater than or equal to 60, printf passed, printf grade is greater than 60. So what happens if the value of grade is given as, say 30? I'll let the user guess for a minute. Just check it and think about what is the answer that you would get. You can pause it for a second. Now welcome back. So let's check this again, right? So if grade is, so how C works is, the flower brackets that I said is little optional in C, I'll tell you why. So in this particular case, if grade is greater than or equal to 60, in our case grade is 30. Is 30 greater than or equal to 60? No, it is false. So what happens in C, this indentation works differently in Python. But in C, if the flower bracket is not given, only the first statement gets executed um, for the within the if. So if grade is greater than or equal to 60, so grade is 30, is 30 greater than or equal to 60? No. So this statement does not get executed, but this statement will be executed. So this is equivalent to this. So there is no difference in C. Tabs do not make a difference. Uh, you can even have it like this. It doesn't make a difference. So what happens in this case is, I'll run this program, it will just print this, I'll run a value saying 30. So if I give the value of grade as 30, it will print grade is greater than 60. You see that grade is greater than 60. So what's really happening is, it checks here, the program was like this, even if it is like this, even in this case, the same will be the thing, output. So even if I give here and then I give a 30, even in this case, it is printing grade is greater than 60. So what's really happening is when there is no flower brackets here, it actually executes only one statement as a part of the if statement. So is 30 greater than or equal to 60, it's checking that. No, that is false. So it skips this one statement and then it comes here. But if it was given like this within the flower brackets, so anything within the flower brackets is part of if right all these statements are part of f so now if i give 30 it will skip both the statements so now if you look at it there is no output printed because both the statements are skipped so let's take this algorithm or flow chart to compare three numbers and find out which one is greater so you're reading the three numbers first you're checking if a is greater than b so if a is greater than b then um, if the condition is true then you are checking if A is greater than C. If A is greater than B and A is greater than C, A is the largest number. If A is greater than B, but A is less than C, then 
c is the largest number so, but if a is less than b then it comes here you are checking if b is greater than c then you can say true means b is the largest number but if b is less than c then c is the largest number right so here if you find there is an if within that there are ifs available so how do we implement this kind of a logic so let's look at this as a program enter three integers so a b and c we are receiving three if a is greater than b so that's the first check we are making so if it is true within that you can have another if if a is greater than c so given that it is only one statement here i am not using the flower bracket but if you want to use you can use that no harm in that so if a is greater than c print if a is the greater so a is greater than b and a is greater than c so it is greatest if a is greater than b but a is greater than c is false that means c is the greatest so you can print c as the greatest number again here if required flower brackets can be given otherwise it is optional because there is only one statement here if this condition is false that means b is greater than a so if b is greater than c then b is greater than a and b is greater than c so b is the greatest else c is the greatest so we can give the program to check it quickly so i'll give enter the three integers 3 4 and 5 so now 5 is the greatest so that's how it works in this case c is the greatest number so it works fine so this is how you can use one if within another if any number of if statements can be made like that there is no problem so similar to if there is another statement called switch in c which is also helpful in making decisions so let's look at this program on the left side first there is a character c you are asking the user to enter a choice scan of percentage c ampersand c right so a value is obtained from the user so if c equal to a option a is chosen if c equal to b option b is chosen if c equal to c option c, c is chosen else default option is chosen right typically we use this in menus right this is the way you write for menus right so the same thing can be used written using an if also or an alternate way is switch so the top part remains the same character c enter choice scan of percentage c ampersand c so till then both the sides are the same now there is something called switch c and then open flower brackets close flower brackets now if case is a look at the value here there is a single quotes so if case is a option a is chosen and then there is a break if case is b option b is chosen break case c option c is chosen break or default then default is chosen break so how this works is if a is given here it directly jumps to this case and it prints all the statements within that till it sees a break whenever it sees a break it jumps to this point it continues here right similarly if b is given it directly jumps here there is a colon here there is a colon here remember the syntax it directly jumps here it says option b is chosen and it executes if there are more statements here then it executes all those statements and then it when it sees a break it comes out of the loop again case c option c is chosen and all the statements there and then till it sees a break once it sees a break it comes here if none of these options are true it executes the default it says default is working fine this is the break so in this case if i ignore this break right what happens is if i choose option a it prints option a is chosen and then it continues here till it sees break so option b is chosen will also come and then it executes the break so this is how a switch statement works in c let's see that in a quick program so this is how switch works uh, it's usually better to have these tabs here so that it's easier to read right so usually this is better to read otherwise c doesn't require it but still it's better to read this way okay so always use this so that it's easier to read the program so in this particular case first there is a switch statement so it's checking the values right so let's i'll just make a quick change yeah so now this is how the program looks okay so i'm reading a value scan of percentage cc right based on that it is switching here let's run this 
so it should give enter choice okay i'm giving a so it says option a is chosen and then it does a break i'll again run the program i'll give option c so if you look at it two lines get executed all the statements within this can execute it need not be one it can be more than one here and then i'll do x so default none of these are true so it comes here in this case if i remove this statement and then i choose option b it executes b and then it goes into option c as well so if you see here option b uh, b is chosen c is chosen and then it says printing a second line so all these three lines have been printed here in this particular case right so without a break it continues till the end that's how switch works so let's look at switch using python tutor so it a equal to 3 b equal to 4 actually b is not even considered here so a is 3 um, so switch of a so in this case the value of a is 3 so it will skip all these things directly jump here to line 12 so if you look at it it directly went to this option and after executing it it checks that there is a break so it comes out of the loop so this is how it works so let's look at the second one a is 3 switch of a minus 1 so a is 3 a minus 1 it does an evaluation so a minus 1 is 2 so it goes to option 2 printf2 is selected so after executing this there is no break here so it comes to this it will also print 3 is selected and then break so 2 is selected 3 is selected both get printed because it jumps here there is no break after this that's why this happens so the last part of conditional statements is the ternary operator um, so look at this program we have two variables a and b a is 3 and b is 4 if a greater than b printf a is greater else printf b is greater right very simple conditional uh, statement here if statement right the same thing can be achieved using this term ternary operator percentage d is greater comma a greater than b question mark a colon b so what happens is it executes this condition if a is greater if it is true then a gets returned if b is greater b gets returned this is called the ternary operator we saw it in operators now we are seeing it in action another example of ternary operator x is equal to a greater than b um, a comma b so i have to declare x here let me declare it so in this program i am assigning if a is greater than b a gets assigned to x else b gets assigned to x so let's run this program so first it executes here um, a is greater so sorry b is greater so 4 is greater gets executed for this second we are looking at this percentage d is greater a greater than b question mark a colon b so here b is the one so it is false so this is true this is false so the 4 gets assigned here this is called ternary operator again so that concludes the chapter on conditional statements